At the outset, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Dubba and General Kapoor sir, both are being my teachers sir, for giving this opportunity sir. So today I will be, uh, my talk will be on the first line uh, management of pulse uh, rearrangement uh, non cancer lung cancer. So just uh, brief on the incidence of lung cancer at present Globocon data, we have 71,000 patients and by 2040 it is projected to be almost doubling to the tune of uh, lakh, uh, 1 lakh 20,000 patients. And, uh, and the mortality wise also, present it's 77,000 and projected uh, for 2040, it is again doubled uh, the mortality. So the, that kind of burden of lung cancer we have in our society. So just uh, restricting towards the ALK positive non cancer lung cancer, the worldwide it is around 2 to 5 percent incidence. But the Indian data, we have one uh, paper from North India, which shows that the incidence of around 1.6 to 11 percent of non cancer lung cancer after EGFR are seen to be having ALK gene rearrangement. So based on this, the development of therapy for ALK uh, inhibitor dates back from 2007 with the discovery of uh, EML ALK for transportation. And half a decade later, we have first generation TK with presutinib showing the improved PFS when compared to the chemotherapy. And later on, with improved efficacy, we have second generation and third generation TK on the run. So, First of all, uh, the first generation, second generation, the third generation TKs. First generation, we have Prisotinib, and the second generation, we have three molecules, Seritinib, Alexinib, and Brigatinib. And uh, the third generation, we have Lolatinib. So gradually, when the generation increases, there are gradually increases in the potency and also the activity against some uh, ALK mutations, which are seen after the usage of first generation TK, and also improved CNS activity overall. The first, uh, the data on the first generation uh, TK we had uh, just seen with the eminent speaker speaking on Prisotelli. It was compared with the uh, chemotherapy in the profile 1014 trial, which had given an improved PFS of 10.9 months versus 7 months uh, versus chemotherapy wise. And uh, the updated overall survival, though the data was not mature, so just numerically there was some benefit, but no mature data from the uh, Prisotelli data. Followed by that, then we had a second generation TK, seritinib. Again, it was compared with the chemotherapy in SN4 trial. Here we had a doubling of PS, uh, PFS detailed, uh, uh, we have seen by Dr. Dubey's presentation, with a PFS of around 16 months versus 8 months in the chemotherapy arm, with a response rate of 72% versus 26% in the chemotherapy arm. So, followed by this, again, the OS data still, again, not mature even with this, only the PFS benefit maximum. And then we had a Alex study with the Alex study in the first generation, uh, first uh, compared to the first generation TK, Chrysotelib. Here, the PFS, we can see the beautiful separation of the uh, Kaplan Mesov. The PFS of around 34.8 months in Alex versus 10.9 months in the Chrysotelib arm with a hazard risk of 0.43. So, and the overall survival, again, the data is immature in the Alex arm. So these were the snapshot of the trials in the first generation and second generation TK. Initially, the chrysotinib and the seritinib comparing both with the, against the chemotherapy arm, chrysotinib giving a PFS of 10.9 months and seritinib second generation giving the PFS of around 16.6 months. And then we had a second generation alexanib giving versus first generation chrysotinib giving us a improved PFS of around 34.8 months versus 10 months in the first generation TK. Another molecule in the second generation TK, we have brigatinib, again given a PFS around 24 months versus 11 months in the chrysotinib arm. So, as the patient survived, as the previous has improved, there were a lot of uh, uh, metastasis in the brain, which has been seen in this patient. Also, the ALK was being more uh, prone for the brain metastasis, and few acquired mutations seen with the use of first generation TK. There was a need for addressing these. Uh, unmet needs of uh, the treatment for uh, brain, metastatic brain disease and this uncommon uh, resistance to RTK. So based on this, there was a further research and then we had a molecular third generation TK, Lorlatinib, which had effective CNS penetration and retention and also has a high binding to the most of the ALK resistance mutations. So the evidence from this study was the Crown trial, which was a multinational uh, phase three trial uh, inclusion being a stage 3B, stage 4 R positive non sponsor lung cancer patient with no prior systemic treatment for metastatic disease, PS of 0 to 2, asymptomatic treated or untreated CNS metastasis was permitted in the study, and those who had more than one extracranial metastasis and the target lesions with no prior radiation were included in the study. 
There was a one is to one randomization with the volatility versus resultant bomb. Approximately 150 patients in each arm, which satisfied based on the presence of brain metastasis and ethnicity, Asian versus non-Asian. The primary endpoint of the study was TFS by blinded independent central review, and the second endpoint was TFS overall response rate, intracranial overall response rate, duration of response, intracranial duration of response, and intracranial time to progression by DICR, along with the safety and quality of life. There was no crossover allowed between the treatment arms in this study. So the baseline characters of the study is almost matchable compared to the valorlatinib and prazotinib arm. The median age around 60 years. and asian population comprising up to 44% of the patients and both patients in top zero and top one i uh, smoke and never smokers up, up, up to 60% and the brain metastasis was allowed around 26% of patients in the brain metastasis almost both the uh, we had a uh, 18 months uh, interim analysis of the tone data so the improved tfs in the lolotinib group compared to the prazotinib group Here I am presenting the recent data which has been put up by the ASAR 2022, where the updated 36 month follow up data was uh, given in this study. So at 36 month of follow up, median follow up in the low latency arm, the BSAR SSPFS remains longer in the low latency. It was not reached in the low latency arm compared to the resolutiny arm, which had a 9.3 months. You can see the graph where it is beautifully separated from initial and the 36 months. Almost 63.5 percent in the lolotinib arm were alive, and they were progression free. Sir, and compared to 18.9 percent of patients in the prazotinib arm, uh, and uh, coming to the subgroup analysis of forest plot, almost all the subgroup either it can be the Asian or non-Asian origin, age-wise, male sir smoking status, or the present or the area uh, performance status. Almost everyone favored with the usage of Lorlatinib arm. They had further sub uh, divided the results based on the patient with or without brain metastasis. With the patients presenting with the base with the baseline brain metastasis, again lorlatinib with the median PFS was not reached in the third six month data, and crizotinib was seven point two months. And those without any brain metastasis, again there was no uh, median PFS was not reached, and the crizotinib arm was eleven months in the third six month follow up. And time to intracranial uh, progression was longer in lolotinib compared to the crizotinib arm. And the time to progression median again it was not reached in the lolotinib arm. And in the crizotinib arm it was 16.6 months with a hazard of 0.08. And again a BSCR assess intracranial time to progression in patients with brain baseline brain metastasis. A 36 month data again median PF was not reached in the lolotinib arm. And in crizotinib arm it was to the tune of 7.3 months. Uh, and the time to time progression in patient without any baseline brain metastasis again not reached in the uh, lolotinib arm and those in crizotinib without any baseline brain met uh, it was around 30 months the hazard of 0.02 so overall uh, just a glance of uh, the results of crown study the confirmed overall response rate was between of 17.7% in the lolotinib versus 58% in the crizotinib arm And uh, patient with any brain metastasis who had at the baseline, the uh, uh, intracranial oral response rate was seen in 4 percent of patients who are on lolotinib, compared to only 17 percent of patients who are on crizotinib. And most importantly, almost 59 percent of patients who are on lolotinib have the complete intracranial response rate, uh, compared to the only 12 percent in the crizotinib arm. And patient who had at least one measurable brain metastasis at baseline. They uh, had a confirmed uh, response rate of 83% in the low latency arm versus 23% in the crizotinib the arm. Again, the complete the intracranial response was 72% in the low latency arm, just 7% in the crizotinib arm. Adverse events almost there was no much of the new safety signal uh, seen in the study with the low latency low latency usage. However, the grade three for adverse events were between you know, 75% in the low latency and 57% in the crizotinib arm. Uh, but important is any adverse event leading to the dose reduction was up to between of 21% in the low latency and 14% in crizotinib. But leading to permanent treatment discontinuity expression, it was only 7% in the low latency arm and 9.9% in the crizotinib arm. The majority of uh, adverse event which we had seen in the low latency patients were either because of the hypercholesterolemia and hypertriglyceridemia and few of edema. And majority of these were in the grade one to two and not in grade three to five. So. 
these are the uh, data we have at present in the first time usage of prolatinib the 18 month and the 36 month follow up data both the data shows us uh, the efficacy and the safety of the efficacy and the safety of lolotinib is maintained even after the 36 month follow up with the pfs with a hazard of 2.27 overall response rate of 77% time to intracranial progression of 0 0.08 hazard complete intracranial response was seen in up to 59.5 patients with the lolotinib usage and those with one measurable brain metastasis had a complete intracranial response of 72% and uh, the treatment uh, discontinuation is seen both 7% percent, 7% and it remained to be 77% in the third six month follow the small comparison between the various first line pk which we have at present the serotonin however the comparator arm sn4 here it was a chemotherapy it gave us a doubling of pfs 8 months so with the uh, chemo was 16 months in the uh, serotonin arm however after that all the uh, second generation alexanib brigatinib and nuvomalkin in the second generation ansartinib and the third generation lolatinib in the crown study had the comparator arm being the first generation TK chrysotinib and the PFS what we had with alexanib was 25 months, brigatinib same almost same PFS of 24 months compared to the 10 months, 11 months in the uh, chrysotinib and sartinib again given this the 75 months of PFS however in the lolatinib till the latest data cut off 36 month follow up the PFS was not reached this is 9% in the chrysotinib arm. This is the overall survival. Again, in all the studies, it has been not much matured. Even in the crown data, it is not much matured at present, the overall survival data. Important thing is the low latinib compared to the other uh, uh, TK, what we can see is, though the median PFS is one is the median PFS, which is not reached in the third six month follow up, CNS response rate, what the glaring is, it is 71% with the usage of low latinib compared to chrysotinib. With Arlectinib having a very good CNS penetration, it is giving you only up to 38% CNS response rate and Brigatinib of 11% CNS response rate. So, and the adverse events, just a cross trial, you can see about the other agents, discontinuation was seen with the adverse events, it is 14% in the Arlectinib, 13% in the Brigatinib, and only 7% in the low latinib group. It was one of the one of the meta analysis, an adverse meta analysis, which showed that. Uh, with comparing a low latinib, alexinib, and brigatinib with the ALK inhibitor, NAVE or untreated ALK positive advanced non smoker lung cancer. Here it showed, in terms of PFS, it showed that all latinib was the best treatment of choice for patients with ALK inhibitor, NAVE or untreated ALK positive advanced non smoker lung cancer. So, real world data, this is for the TMS data. Basically, it was in the second line setting. Again, it had a clinical benefit of around 73%, though it was in the second line setting, which was seen. So based on this NCCN at present the uh, NCCN recommendation, it has included lolentinib as a first line response along with alexinib, brigatinib as a category one indication for patients with alkyl positive non smoker lung cancer. The evidence wise, efficacy wise, uh, summary of sequencing again, orlatinib if you put on still the data cut off of 36 months, the PFS is not reached. Alexinib, we have a maximum PFS of Alex with the 34 months. And then second line lolotinib based on the phase one phase two trial, it goes to the tune of five to six months of PFS benefit. So, and later we have other agents of uh, methods of therapy. So, concluding my talk on this, with this uh, third six month of follow up, the PFS what we have seen is almost three years cut off of that sixty three percent with the lolotinib and eighteen point nine percent with the prisotinib. And what importance is? It, uh, the importance is the patient uh, these efficacy benefits in lolotinib compared to the chrysotinib were observed not only in patients who had baseline brain metastasis but also in patients without baseline brain metastasis which suggests there could be a uh, action of lolotinib being a protective effect against the development of brain metastasis who are on lolotinib treatment and the efficacy safety wise there is no new safety signal seen and these updated long term data from the town uh, confirms the efficacy of lolotinib or chrysotinib in patients with these patient nerve all positive non muscle lung cancer and support the use of lolotinib in these patients with or without brain metastasis. I conclude my talk on this and thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Kaushik. You have very yeah. nicely covered the uh, overview of management in ALK positive lung small cell carcinoma. Uh, uh, I think all questions have already been covered in the previous talk and will be covered in the subsequently panel discussion. 
so we'll move on to the next talk thank you koshik it was a very lucid talk and uh, very nicely you have covered it thank you very much koshik so we'll move on.